Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with Rex Beach, who recently just had an amazing uh, discovery made through really going through Ancestry.com and trying to find um, your dad, who you knew very little about, and come to discover that you more than likely had been kidnapped by your mom and kind of kept quiet to yourselves and and so now as an adult trying to build a kind of a relationship with a father who's passed away and honor him as a World War II veteran. Have I summed it up pretty yes. pretty mm-hmm. well? Yeah. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> yeah. Is this going to be a book, Rex? Actually, I'm starting to write a book mm-hmm. about it. I have two friends at my church who are author, authors. They've written books and that, and so they said they'll help me. And I was um, wanting to uh, get my father's story out, mm-hmm. uh, possibly throughout the world. As I understand it, I've... On January 13th, when the the uh, Kent Repository put out the uh, news article they did on to AP, mm-hmm. and it's gone in different places all over the country, and it's been in the Military Times, and so I know uh, a lot of people have read that part of it, my story, and um, I just think that the whole story could help, uh, like I told the news reporters that did the articles that it would encourage people to never give up on their prayers or their dreams or their goals in life because right. in some cases like mine it can take years sometimes sometimes it could take weeks months but usually that doesn't happen overnight it takes a lot of determination and not giving up and kind of like you know rocky no matter how many obstacles mm-hmm. you run into you just keep on trying don't mm-hmm. give up and eventually your prayer will be answered well a lot of that is when people are are doing ancestry um it's there are sometimes you run into bumps and there's some things, but you do make some amazing discoveries at the same time. To be able to locate him, this still blows me away, and, and you kind of see God's hand in this, that you were able to locate where he was buried, even though it was unmarked, and somewhere in Texas, did you say? Yeah, see, uh, uh, when he died, anybody in Dallas, Texas, uh, it's a very big place, uh, if they're homeless or they don't know who they are or have any relatives, they bury them in a section of an old cemetery in a pauper's grave type area. And um, I mm. was able to find out the exact plot location. They, they keep all that records in. I learned uh, this year, just a few weeks ago, that uh, they also put a body tag on him like you would see in CSI shows, and that, that identified who he is and his uh, Social Security number and that. So that in case anyone ever did find him like myself, then you would have proof because I was given pictures by the uh, funeral director down there who did the exhumation several weeks ago, and they sent them to me, and they were very very detailed. They actually had to uh, have a medical examiner on site. Mm. It was almost like an archaeological dig. Yes. But they had to be very careful because he wasn't in a cask or nothing, just a little body bag, you know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So he passed away, remind me, what year? Um, August 6, 1999 at 7.50 p.m. Hmm. Wow, see, look how much you know now. Yeah. And he, um, and then you did have his body exhumed, and mm-hmm. you've since um, ha- held a funeral for him, a proper funeral for him. Tell us about that. I guess... Um, one of the things that kind of confuses people is why would I uh, go through the process of waiting. It took me several years to try to get the money. I mean, I mm-hmm. tried different government agencies. No one would help. Uh, Governor, I mean, Senator Sharon Brown was able to do some research, and I didn't know it, but apparently he was able to conduct a congressional inquiry into my father's case. And it turned out my father's original records that proved he was a veteran, mm-hmm. burned up in a fire in 73, but he found other records. And that was the first time I realized that my father served 43 months in World War II. Wow. So here's someone who honestly could um, have a very prestigious funeral mm-hmm. and instead had been in a body bag somewhere yeah. in Texas. So you, uh, you took care of that. You made that right. Tell mm-hmm. us about the funeral you conducted for him then. Um, I had seen videos of the Patriot Guard writers, and I wanted to have that kind of a 
honors escort for him, and so I arranged it with the North Texas Patriot Guard riders down there, and uh, apparently down in Grand Prairie, Texas, which was where he was buried in the cemetery there, after they exhumed him, they transported his body to the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, and they really, that city does the uh, honoring the veterans in that situation really big. They had like four police units, six uh, police on motorcycle, plus all the Patriot Guard riders showed up to give him an escort, uh, his uh, hearse through the city and up to the airport and that. And, uh, and then I had uh, people up here, the Patriot Guard riders, come. Of course, I would planned on this in July of last year. That's when uh, a bank had gave me a $10,000 loan so I could afford to do it. Mm-hmm. However, I had run into some problems down there and I got a little frustrated because the city of Texas wouldn't grant a permit. Mm. And so after four Why? Months, <laughs> Did they give you a reason? No, my funeral director checked and uh, spoke with somebody and they said, well, yes, we got your permit, we got your money, and now we can't tell you because it's up to the state of Texas. It's not our department or something. You know, it's just sort of the runaround. And when I found that out, I sent an email to... Uh, Senator Brown, I was kind of shocked. And the very next morning, early, he emailed me back and said, "Just staff will look into it." Wow, and, nice. And uh, she uh, called me on November 20th and said, "We contacted them. We're waiting to hear back." And six days later, the state of Texas signed, agreed on the permit and everything. Mm, wonderful. And uh, when she called me and told me that, I was at work, and she said, <laughs> "I was kind of shocked." As she said that Senator Brown probably could not come to you know my father's funeral but she would who is a, a his aide that handles veterans affairs so they even sent someone from the office to, yes, to attend she said he would also have a flag flown over our nation's capital mm. in uh, honor of his service to our country and just the thought at that moment when i was at work that you know he would go from forgotten about in a body bag in an old empty grave and then to be you know buried with honors up here have a flag flying over the nation's capital. It was like half an hour before I can go back to work because I couldn't stop crying. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Mm-hmm. That is absolutely beautiful. Did you speak at his funeral? Yes. Part of it's on uh, uh, YouTube, I found out. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I was like, this was a hard part because uh, on January 8th, it wasn't until the evening he arrived in the airport up there in the evening. And uh, Channel 5 uh, told me that they were going to have a news chopper up there to try to televise the plane landing and all that because yes. for security reasons, I'm not allowed to you know, just run up there on the airfield and try to do it, meet <laughs> no, the No, they basket. don't let you do that? They <laughs> did in some cases. I saw but on YouTube videos. Uh, YouTube yeah. videos aren't all for everybody, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. And then uh, that morning, I found out it was going to be rain and mm-hmm. lightning up there and everything it all just happened at the same time. And uh it was um, kind of frustrating. There's so many obstacles in my life just to get to meet him, to have another one, you know. And then I was, th- actually, he was in a cardboard encased thing. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really get to actually see his casket until uh, we got back here in the Canton that night. Just a, a remarkable reuniting of father and son, in a sense, mm-hmm. after an exhaustive search. And then to be able to give him just a proper military honors funeral. Do you have? Did they present you with a flag? Do you have a, a flag from it? Yes. Yeah, so ha- um, in the the day of Wednesday, which was uh, the ninth, I just had a uh, several hours to be with him at the funeral home. Mm-hmm. And uh, describe that, Rex. It was Here's strange. somebody that you've looked for. <laughs> someone that was years. like the phantom. Mm-hmm. From your childhood, yeah. the phantom dad yeah. that no yeah. one spoke of, yeah. and there you were with his casket for several hours prior to the funeral. What, tell me about that. That was hard, actually, because um, his casket, once they uncovered it at the funeral home that night, the Patriot Guard riders lined both sides of the uh, garage area and the second that the casket was uncovered, they took an American flag and put it over it. Mm-hmm. So I never really saw the full casket. And um, then, of course, uh, they wouldn't let me 
stay overnight with my dad, it would be a little too strange, I guess. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> I mean, there was that part of me that wanted to because, you yeah, know, it's yeah. been so many years, you know, yeah. waiting. And so Wednesday I was in the afternoon spending some time with him. And uh, it was kind of – Did you – I started crying, actually. I just yeah. laid on the top of the casket with my chest where mm -hmm. I knew he was under inside, you know, knowing that. And I suppose people would think, you oh, know, you should be extremely happy. You should be joyful. And at the beginning I was, but then to realize that the very next day you're going to have to let him go again, it was yeah. just hard. And so that night uh, I was going to give a, a asked, I said I wanted to give a eulogy, but yes, I was emotionally in no shape to <laughs> try to write anything up in a, right. anything like that uh, that evening. And so I just took a long shower and I just started having a chat with the God and mm -hmm. told him I just emotionally I can't handle this and the, I kind of reminded God of Philippians 4.13, you know, I can do all things through Christ. And yes. I said, I need your help here. And so I went down and got on my computer, and I put a eulogy together and everything. And I uh, I knew there would be reporters there and stuff like that. But, um, of course, when they put it in the paper or on the YouTube segments, they kind of left out the parts where I talked about how that I learned to forgive my parents mm -hmm. whatever they did because of God forgave me. God mm. helped me, and he gave me that kind of a love, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like the one, uh, 94.1 posted an online article about my story mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks ago, and they said it, and in the caption of my little picture of the baby and me and my dad, she sa uh, they said, An un the son's unconditional love for his father, and that kind of reminded me of mm -hmm. how God loves us, you know. Unconditionally. Mm -hmm. It yeah. doesn't matter what you do or don't do. Uh, it's a story of forgiveness. It's a story of reconciliation. What would be your message to anyone hearing you right now? Of I know you've said don't give up. If mm -hmm. you've got a, a dream, a goal, keep to it. But what do you hope people take away after they've heard your story? That you have to learn to be able to forgive others no matter what they've done to you. And you have to kind of let it go and kind of try to reconcile. I know that there, there's a lot of um, families who one person doesn't like the other one, one can't stand your uncle and this and that because of something they said or because they have a political view or whatever, you know, but uh, we let so many of these small things tear us apart, you know. And, uh, uh, one thing I learned that uh, was too late to uh, save my marriage was uh, from a marriage counselor that she shared a, a way to help. There's a lot of families and a lot of mothers, I know. So, um, it could be your friends. Mm -hmm. It could be husband and wife. And you're falling apart. You're tired of each other. This things, you know, just kind of start separating you. And she said she learned from a place that she went to for a lecture that a simple, easy way to take care of that problem is to for instance, wake up one day, and the day you wake up, you think about that person, you just can't outstand them, and just think about one little thing that you like, mm. the way they smile, the way they, they take out the trash, or whatever, little, just a little thing, you know, and think about it all day, and then she said, get up the next day and think about two things. Nice. And another one, and then another one the next day, and she said, and she tried it, she did, she did, worked on her own marriage, that eventually one day you'll wake up and find out you have the same love, you know. Mm-hmm. Boy. We're like video cameras, aren't we? We yeah. we see what we look at. Mm -hmm. We see what we yeah. point that camera to, mm -hmm. and that's what we tend to see. Well, it's an amazing, beautiful story, uh, Rex Beach. Where can we find more information? Do you have a website or something where people I can should. read this? I guess I should put one up. Or I think I you should. <laughs> okay. There is a couple well, of YouTube videos that interviews with it, and then I discovered when I typed in, uh, somebody said uh, you're on you're on the internet, and there's uh, so I typed in my Rex Beach, Canton, Ohio, mm -hmm. and there's like ten. You know, I like on Google, and there's like sheets of page this, this, this. I was like eight or nine pages of me stories, you know. Perfect. Like that, so. that sounds perfect. Mm -hmm. That's where we can find out more. Rex Beach, thank you for sharing your story with us today on our community.